good evening and welcome to another edition of Off Track Small Talk. Tonight I'm going to be talking to number 24, Mark Adkins, who's also going to reveal his car for the 2021 season. Mark, uh, good evening. Thank you very much for doing this. Good evening. You all right? Very well, thank you. Thank I was you. Before uh, we did this call tonight, I was just looking at the, the booking list for Kings Lynn, which has been released. Have you had a chance to see it yet? No, I don't really want to, to be honest. <laughs> I, can, I can crash on my own without having loads of other people around me, so we'll just get that as it comes. Well, just I guess just to put your mind at ease, I suppose, it's going to be you and 69 others. So, um, it's... Oh, that's all right, then. Yeah, yeah, it's an, it's an epic I'll, learning. I'll apologise the... to others now, then. <laughs> <laughs> but, but in all seriousness, though, what, what a great start to the, the season. 70 cars on, on a Saturday night at Kings Lynn. It, it can't get better than that, can it? Oh, no, I think we've all missed it, haven't we? So we just want to get back out there and uh, I think we're a bit more keen than what we want. Yeah. All this lockdown stuff, so. Yes, no, it's going to be very good, very good. Okay, right. So um, before we get to like looking at your, your car for the new season, a bit about you first, really. So um, you came into Formula One in 2014, following a brief period in Formula Two. So what prompted the move into, into Formula One stock cars? Um. I think what it was, I was getting to a point where in Formula 2s, I could have probably afford a good time at car and a decent, and a shale car. Yeah. But that equated to a cheap F1, so we did that. <laughs> a, a great choice, a great choice. Yeah. So from those kind of like, that kind of beginning, you then almost sort of went all in. You'd got a shale car for Formula 1, you'd got a tarmac car for Formula 1, and it was like, and you're doing lots of meetings. Was that always the intention to kind of get to that point? Um, no, I mean, we did, like, the first season, we just did what we did, and then the second season, we had the car, and we had it, we, had, we were doing both surfaces with one car, yeah. and then the, the, the old, it used to be Ryan Harrison's car, that came up cheap, yeah. we put that on track, but we literally, engine blew up second time we raced it, so we went back to racing other car, yeah. um, so, but it won't, it won't no intentions, I think we just got a bit carried away one night on eBay, I think it was. <laughs> 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 were you having a few drinks at the time? Was that part of the problem? <laughs> Me, I a few drinks. I don't know who been talking to me. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of so in terms of like having the two cars, how long did you have them for then? Because you did go back to just having one car again, didn't you? Yeah, I, don't, I think I might have done about four meetings in the, the Harrison car, something like that. I'd ever <laughs> by the time I just got used to it. Um, the the engine blew up on it so then we just yeah. went back to using the the old faithful the green yeah. goddess as we called it yeah okay yeah. and then so i guess a bit further along you went back to formula twos again so what was why was that was that just about enough formula ones for a bit i need a change or um no well, what it was it was just a case of i was selling cars um and there was i was struggling to sell them and then i got um I got offered a bit of a part exchange with, with, with Dad's kitchen, actually. Um, yeah. So, and, and I just took the F2 in part exchange, and we thought, well, at least I've got some, I've sold car, I've got a bit of money in my pocket, and we're all right. So, that's that's the only that sort of reason. Yeah. So, what prompted that decision to kind of go, right, I'm selling the cars in Formula One? Was it, I've just had enough of it, or? I think I'm a bit, no, um, I was just going to give up, in fairness. Um, yeah. I've just got to a point where I would just, it, it were hard. We, it were with like with family life at the time. I was struggling to set a date for like the lads to come round at night. So one day it be Monday, one day it yeah. be Tuesday, one day it be Wednesday, and you need to do the the nights. So we struggled yeah. with that. Um, whereas F two, I could just pull it in and and do it on my own. Yeah. Um, so. Okay, that actually makes sense. Um, so you're back in Formula One again, which is brilliant. Um, and so. If you kind of look at, I guess, sort of previously, your race wins in Formula One have been on tarmac, um, but I kind of seem to remember you've been almost better on shale, uh, particularly at Sheffield. You seem to go really well at, at Sheffield. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quite just a corner off. Dan Johnson just caught me on that corner. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, yes. Uh, uh, was it? Was but, that? Uh, <laughs> it were. It were um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, to be fair, we at that that time we we just that was the first season where we'd spent. Um, we just had a new engine and uh, we'd, we'd set the limiter at five and a half thousand because yeah. I didn't want to blow it up because it spent a this engine. So I remember getting to end it straight and it just did it limit and just seeing Dan Johnson, I thought, and he got me just on last corner. So there you go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, I've got a second, so that's all right. <laughs> that's, that's all right. That's good. Do, yeah. do you like Shepard the track then? Is that one of your favourites? I, I love it. Until, <laughs> I mean, I've never <laughs> touched wood. I've never done. I've never hit the fence in an F in F one, but I've bent two cars in an F two. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Did you say it doesn't hurt when you hit the fence? If that's any. Concept? It depends which part you fit. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> If you hit the first, it, it sort of does. <laughs> yeah. So I guess so let me just I guess clarify for my own understanding then. So you did the form, you know, got rid of the Formula Ones, uh, had the Formula Two, and then you obviously came back into Formula One again. So was it? I, I can do it a bit better this time. I'm a bit more organised. It fits better and work family. Not at all. It will literally. We were. Uh, we we always go. To, we start when we first went to venue. We loved it. Really good weekend. It's a bit of an all rounder, a bit of racing, but it's a really good weekend from start to finish. And we'd we were five of us. We'd all book to go to Venre to watch. Yeah. And it was like it was cheap. We were, we were going to borrow a caravan and a van. It was cheaper to set wagon, but then because we had wagon, it was like well, wagon's empty. What we're going to do? So we'll just buy an F two. And I actually bought another F two. And it was like right at the top of Scotland. They were like, nah. So then this F1 came up really cheap. I'm like, well, let's just buy that. Right, <laughs> okay. So I went and bought this F1 and then uh, we had the worst three weeks. We were we unfortunate. The engine must have suffered somewhere when it was being stood. So the engine blew up. Um, <laughs> we we struck, stripped all the bumpers down, the nerfs off. It were down to the bare shaz. We rebuilt it within three weeks to go to Venry. So it was literally <laughs> just to go to Venry, really. <laughs> That's a, that seems like a very expensive trip to Holland, Mark, if you don't mind me saying. Yeah, but we're still here, aren't we? So it's good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so whose car was it that, you, that you've kind of, you've got now, I guess? Well, it were it was Sport, Paul Spoon who I bought it off. Um, yeah. John Dowson Jr., he had it for a little bit. Ah, okay, it, yeah, uh, yeah. Is it Lee Cooper? I think it was, Grass Tracking Laddie, we had it before that. Ah, uh, okay, yeah, I do know, yeah. yeah. Okay. Like a little bit green colour. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got a bit of history about that part, hasn't it? So. Yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's stood more than it has raced, to be fair. <laughs> but hopefully you're going to change that this year. Oh, so... definitely. definitely <laughs> good. Yeah. Okay, Um. so yeah, I don't normally do this, but your good friend AJ's been badgering me, badgering me, badgering me. He knew we were going to talk tonight. And he wants me to ask you about a speed weekend. I'm, I'm not sure what it means. What do you know? Uh, drinking maybe. Uh, How about lap times? I think you mentioned somewhere. I mean, is he still back on about that? I mean, I, you know, I've, I've often thought about this, but um, AJ Hemingway is actually the ex-British champion in yeah. some Formula or another. I mean, he'd been in the newspaper and everything, and he <laughs> still wasn't quite as quick as me. So I'll take that. Whether it's one second, <laughs> point one of a second or anything, I was still quicker. So there you go. We'll leave that there. <laughs> so just, I guess just the backstory is, from my understanding, is that you raced Saturday night, AJ raced at the Sunday, and he was just slightly slower but, than... Yeah, but the actual true story is... Yeah. If, if we were talking fact, so I'd just gone up a grade, I'd gone up from white to yellow or whatever, and I went onto the new Shockers, and me not having a clue what I'm doing with Shockers, I put it on, I put the numbers on the right and the cross weight, um, and anyway, when I went down, it was just real, real loose, I couldn't control it. So I just said, right, do you know what? I'm off to the bar. So I went to the bar, got really drunk. Uh, next day, I said to AJ, I said, you'd race it. I can't be bothered. So he went out. I and mean, then I watched it end up straight. And it was like a dragster. So we put it on the on the, the flat surface. And it was three and a half inch higher up front. And I went, well, that's why I couldn't make it go around. <laughs> and AJ was like, yeah, well, you know, whatever. And so he went and nearly bet the lap time when it was set up right. But that's what I <laughs> It's a it's a good story, Mark, and we'll go with yours because it, it sounds very believable. So we'll go with that. Um, before we reveal your car for the twenty twenty one season, have you set yourself any targets or aspirations for this year? Um, I'm hoping to do more than half a lap. Yeah, that'd be good. Because yeah. <laughs> I got champ. Guys, I went right good at that last year. Last time I raced F one, two really good. Uh, but no, I just I just like to. When I were doing, when I were, I'd just like to do more meetings and hopefully get a bit more. I'd, I'd like to get to Blue Roof. Yeah, good. So that's me. Yeah. yeah, and I guess you know you we've mentioned uh, many times about Bradford. That's kind of a must be a real positive for you as well, sort of living that way. 
Oh yeah, I mean I can walk to hospital and walk home from there, so happy days. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Mark, okay, so what we're gonna do now, over to you to reveal your car for the twenty twenty one season. So here's my car. It's uh, it's been refurbished over the last couple of years, um, and it's a dual surface car. Mark Gilbank's done a lot of work on the suspension. TMR's done a lot of uh, all the panel work and alterations inside. Um, I'd just like to thank all the people what's helped me, all the lads in the workshop. Um, I appreciate. It. And here's my car. Mark, the car looks absolutely fantastic. You've, you've gone away from the green colour scheme that you kind of came a bit sort of famous for. Yeah, well, I think, um, I don't know if everyone liked it, but there seems to be a lot of people, whether it's F1s, F2s, going green and black. And I thought, well, I'll just, I thought we're doing something different. So, and everyone said how bad luck in green is. So I thought, well, fair enough. If they want to go around that bad luck, I'll go, I'll go yeah. blue. So that's us. And we still had yeah. a little bit of green in there as well, just to uh, just to keep the theme going. So yeah, it, it does look brilliant. I mean, I was thinking okay. about um, Calvin Hassel when we did his uh, car reveal. Not only has he gone green, but he's got number thirteen. I mean, I don't know if that just cancels each other out in terms of the bad luck thing, but just very <laughs> brave, I think, isn't it? Or not superstitious at all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> One of the two. Um, so uh, you've been away from for a while from Formula One. What's what's the most what's the thing you're looking most about coming back uh, racing again? looking forward to the most um just the the different i mean i've i've i haven't done shale for a while now and when we were sort of on shale it's just the feeling of coming out of that corner especially like at king's lynn i mean obviously at bradford it might be better it might be worse i don't know <laughs> depends, how <laughs> I, depends how i go it depends how i enter the car doesn't it i suppose yeah but um but no that is the feeling of being an f1 is just unbelievable it's just brilliant. yeah so um, and hopefully we'll uh, we've got a good set of lads who are helping us at that. So hopefully we'll be we'll yeah. see how we get on. And you mentioned uh, prior to us prior to sort of starting recording about your son stopping in the minis and you're at Birmingham, and you sort of said it was, it was great to actually just be back racing and, and seeing people again as well. Oh yeah, that, that, it's, it's, it is. It's just a bit more normality, isn't it? You know. So, yeah. but like I said, my yeah, my lads, my lads doing minis. I mean, regarding the F ones, I it were going to be my last year last year but then then obviously we covered and stuff we didn't bother so um is coming through and is a lot better for me so i just want to <laughs> i want to do a little bit better just so um, to stop his cockiness when he comes back yeah. over the night <laughs> yeah, you want to get to 10 years down the line do you and i'm going i made blue i made red down when i went to formula uh, one so we've been there i mean he, he did the micros and it he, he made blue in micros and i were i were doing his car till half past 10 at night and i get to that half past 10 and he went Dad, how long have you been doing stock cars for? And I went, oh, about 10, 15 years. And he went, did you ever get to blue? And I went, no. He says, well, I have. And I went, yeah, but you haven't been at Gary's lab past 10 at night. You little <laughs> dick, get to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, uh, before we go, um, when, I, when I'm on Facebook, I often see you uh, having quite a lot of banter with, with other drivers. Clearly, that's uh, very important. And you've got good relationships with lots of them, by all accounts. Yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> but that's really bad, though, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, absolutely, stock cars are serious, but it's it's important to sort of maintain that fun side to the sport. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's it's nice to keep it like that. Sometimes it goes a bit too far of a way, but you know, it's um, 
it, it's all about the banter, isn't it? We are, I, about is for me anyway. I love it. I just, I love a bit of banter. I don't mind people taking Mick out of me because I'm, I am the worst critics, critic, so yeah. there you go. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Mark, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you this evening. Good luck for 2021. Anything you'd Thank like you. to say before, before we go? No, just um, just look forward to the season and uh, we might give it a shakedown at uh, a practice day Sunday and then we'll see you next week at uh, yeah. King's Lynn. With, with 69 other drivers. So, yeah, it's going to be good. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> thank you Mark, much. thank you so much for your time. Cheers. Lovely. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.